Hey gang, thanks for checking out this episode of Images Reimagined. This is where I review images that were submitted by photographers like you, and I give constructive feedback through my eyes and experiences. This week's photo comes to us from Mandy Weaver in Port Matilda, Pennsylvania. Be sure to stay tuned until the very end for a look at how I reimagined this image. Mandy posted this portrait from a young girl's high school senior portrait session in my Facebook group. She explained that she had photographed this young lady for a high school senior portrait session. And she had a last minute idea to try an impromptu beauty shot of sorts that incorporated the girl's boho style with her earrings and scarf. The shot is completely natural light, no fill flash or reflectors. The camera was a Nikon D7100 with a 50mm f1.8 lens. The D7100 is an APS-C camera, so that's an equivalent of a 75mm lens. The shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, shooting at a wide aperture of 2.8, and the ISO, 200. Mandy did her post-processing in Lightroom. I love the colors in this shot, and we have a beautiful young girl with a relaxed and genuine smile. Now I'm not a big fan of jewelry in a shot unless the photo is about the jewelry. In the case of this picture, the fact that we can only see one earring, and given that its color is in the same tonal range as her hair, I actually like it as something that gives a little flavor to the shot. A few of the things that do jump out at me, the plaid shirt and green tank top don't really go with the beauty shot concept, and in my opinion, they're just distracting. Especially the neckline of the shirt since we only see a small patch of the skin. Now Mandy did explain to me that this young lady only brought one outfit to the shoot, and as mentioned, this was an impromptu idea. I would suggest whenever possible, always over plan your shoot with an extra outfit or two. I do wish the skin tone on the hands was closer to the tone of the face, and even though it's obvious the sun is coming in low on camera right, I would still like to see a bit more detail in the scarf on the right side. That bright area competes with the subject's face and eyes. Last but not least, I really wish the hands were turned slightly. Grabbing the scarf gently and just a slight turn of the wrist would make the hands look much more elegant. So if we take a look at the raw file that Mandy submitted, it's slightly underexposed, which is probably the result of trusting the meter in a situation where we have that very bright spot next to the subject's face. But this is a very workable file. I can see that there is still a fair amount of detail in the scarf, so I do want to try and bring some of that detail back so that I can eliminate some of the bright distractions. I go with a kind of down and dirty method where I process the raw file twice. Round one is for the overall image and the subject's face. Round two is for the bright scarf and then I blend the two. Now I'll do my usual clarity plus five, vibrance between 20 and 30, and I'll hit the saturation up to three or four. I'll sharpen to 50 and then be sure to check off Remove Chromatic Aberration and Enable Lens Profile. These are my flavor to taste settings that I use on most of my images. Still in Camera Raw, which remember is the same as the Develop Panel in Lightroom, I'm going to click the Auto Exposure setting and you can see it does a pretty good job with this image. I'm still going to make some modifications to soften shadows and balance the skin tones just a bit more. Then I will open the image in Photoshop. From this point forward, most of what I'm going to do to the image will require Photoshop and will not work in Lightroom. I'm going to go back and reopen the RAW file in Camera Raw, and then the saturation levels, only paying attention to the camera right side of the face and hair. You can see the image starting to look pretty flat overall when I make this adjustment. Then I'll open up this version in Photoshop and it will create a second PSD file. I'm going to drag this version as a new layer into my original version and then copy the original layer and place it on top of this new flat colors layer. Then using a soft eraser tool set to an opacity of around 50 to 70, I'll erase the portions of her face that are very orange. This begins to balance out the color on the face so that the orange isn't as extreme. Next up, I'll do my skin and hair retouching using the healing brush and the clone stamp. I'm going to take creative liberty and remove the nose piercing and make her top lip a bit more full. I will open her left eye slightly, brighten the eyes and teeth, and then I'm going to darken the hands just a little bit. And I'm noticing that because it's on the shadow side of her head, there's a tint of blue on the camera left side of the scarf. So I'm going to select that area, 
create a hue saturation layer and remove the blue and cyan so that the scarf has the same creamy color on both sides. A lot of you have asked if I would show the step-by-step -step beginning to end retouching of these images. In some cases, that would make these videos over an hour long. But for those of you that really want to see it, I am making the full step-by-step -step recording of me retouching these images with a voiceover description available to all of my Patreon patrons. A commitment of $5 or more per month will get you full access to these videos, and I'm committed to doing at least two of these Images Reimagined videos each month. I have a link in the description section below. Lastly, I'll fix a few imperfections that I missed earlier in her eyes. And finally, I'm going to use that ImageNomic Portraiture plugin to reduce that last bit of orange in the girl's face and to bump the contrast just a tad. Now we still have the issue with the green shirt and the red and gray plaid shirt. My solution is really easy. We have a beautiful face that is nicely framed by the scarf. Let's go in for a tighter crop and eliminate most of those distractions. And there you have it. My version of this image reimagined. A little lighter and a tighter crop for a bit more impact. I also realized that this shot would look interesting in black and white. So using Nick Silver Effects Pro, I made the conversion and adjusted the contrast in midtones to get this result. So what do you think? Color or black and white? Let me know in the comments section below. If you tune into Talk Chat next week, I'll let you know which one is my preference. Remember, I'm not saying that my image is better or correct. It is my vision of this image. You may have a different opinion. And if you do, please share it in the comments section below. Remember, stay constructive. You can say you don't like something, but offer a solution or an alternative. I hope you find this helpful. If you'd like to have your image reimagined, please follow the link in the info section below. Your image could be my next video. So until next time, gang, remember that your best shot is your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.